Good morning. Welcome to Onalaska United Methodist Church. I am Pastor Park Hunter, and I'm thrilled to be here, here with you today. What a beautiful day. What a beautiful weekend. I've uh, been blessed to do a, a lot of walking and be outside and drive around this weekend. I've just been totally rejoicing in the weather and uh, even saw a couple trees just starting to change color. Uh, beautiful. Uh, a few thank yous. Um, yesterday was stepping out in pink uh, at Gunderson to raise money for cancer research. We had a lot of people from our church uh, who were uh, down there either as survivors or as supporters. And it was just, it was fun to see the crowd and be out. And uh, I think about uh, five times while I was walking, I spotted familiar faces uh, out walking too. So uh, thank you for your support for that. Yesterday was also the memorial service for Sandra Blaney Alderman. That took place over at Kindle, Wisconsin. That was the other reason I got to do some driving yesterday. Um, and it was, uh, Kindle's a town of about 300. Um, uh, we were in a little white uh, country church and they had 150 people packed in there uh, to say farewell to Sarah, uh, Sandra. So um, uh, wonderful and thank you for your prayers for her family as well. We have uh, some other announcements this morning. Uh, Sue wanted to talk to us just a little bit. Here you go, Sue. Well, I didn't hear that Monday was taken, so I have something to tell you about that's occurring tomorrow. Church Women United, which is an ecumenical group representing a variety of churches, and just as an aside, this church in the past has had a very active um, women's group that in turn then was part of the larger Church Women United program. Anyhow, Monday night is their annual scholarship raising event. And that event consists of getting together at 4.30 for hors d'oeuvres, um, which can actually amount to being a light supper. And I want to stress that these hors d'oeuvres are quite special because they're all homemade, and many of them are made by very experienced older bakers. So um, anyhow, they sponsor a speaker as well. And this year's speaker is Carolyn Bostrack. Here's a picture of her. And there is um, a copy of this on the back bulletin board between the office and the, the rear door. So Carolyn is a person who has benefited in the past from the scholarship. She had a very rough beginning. Um, she was a very young, single parent. She also survived a, um, a, an abusive marital relationship. And she has, um, in fact, pulled herself up by the bootstraps with a lot of help from some community organizations, including um, the Strong Families Program. And a couple of weeks ago, she and her daughter who is now a young adult herself, um, were had an article in the La Crosse Tribune. Mm -hmm. So Carolyn has gone on to um, obtain a PhD and has a very viable job, and she's written a book. And the focus of her speech and her book is, you know, how did she survive and make it to a healthy lifestyle? So I hope you consider coming, even though this is a late, um, kind of announcement, and tickets are available at the door, and they're only $7. Um, so think seriously about coming and showing up. It's being held at um, St. Paul's Lutheran Church on West Avenue. Plenty of parking in the back, um, and it's a very delightful and inspiring opportunity. All right, thanks. Uh, Margaret would like to remind you that you have opportunities following this service. Yes. Um, we think of rally day somehow for the kids as the kids going back to Sunday school and beginning to study the Bible again and, and learning more about living as Christians. And maybe we need to be reminded once in a while that we as adults could do the same thing. And so this is my pitch that some of you might consider coming to our adult Bible school uh, adult Bible class, which is called the History and Mystery of the Bible. And we meet every Sunday morning at 945 down in the choir room, which means that you don't even have to skip treats. You can pick up your coffee and treats and come right into the choir room and join us. Um, 
The title of that class confuses some people, but if you think about it, once you start looking at the Bible, it is very helpful to know the context and the history and the customs of the times in which these episodes are set. And that's the history. And the mystery is the wonderful way that all of that scripture still applies to us in our time today. So you're invited to come and join us. Thank you. I know Margaret does a fantastic job unpacking that uh, material with the class, so uh, check it out. Uh, we also have a video-based uh, study for adults that takes place in the Heritage Group, so that's another option for you. Speaking of Rally Day, where's Jessica? Ah. Do you have a, a few things to say? <laughs> Good morning. Um, so yes, Rally Day is, is for the adults and also for the kids. And um, I am now speaking to the people who have kids that are ages three and a half-ish up through fifth grade. And um, those kids will go straight to their classrooms at 945. Um, no gathering time today. And there are signs around the church that tell you where those classrooms are. And then after the kids are dropped off, if the parents could come back in here for a quick short meeting with me just to kind of go over what's going on for the year and um, what the kids will be learning about as well. All right, great. Um, I believe that the middle school and high school kids are also meeting uh, uh, during that time in, in their classrooms. So uh, look for the signs. Um, last note this morning, uh, you've got a blue card in your program. This is our attendance card as well as a prayer card. So you can put that in the uh, offering plate when it comes around. If you are a guest this morning, welcome. And uh, if you take this blue card after the service back to the Welcome Center where you see Jean. Hi, Jean. Uh, she would be happy to trade you this card for a free gift and get to know you a little bit better. So uh, welcome. Let's take a moment and greet each other now with the peace and grace of Jesus Christ. join me now in the call to worship. As a crucible is for silver and a furnace is for gold, Lord, stand by us in our times of trial. Cleanse us of impure hearts, O Lord. And let's continue with our opening song. Praise the Lord, the Almighty.
please be seated. Our scripture reading this morning comes from the book of Daniel, chapter 8, verses 8 through 20, um, various excerpts. Some Babylonian fortune tellers stepped up and accused the Jews. They said to King Nebuchadnezzar, you gave strict orders, O king, that everyone had to fall to their knees and worship the gold statue, and whoever did not had to be pitched into a roaring furnace. Well, there are some Jews here, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. These men are ignoring you, O king. They don't respect your gods, and they won't worship the god you set up. Furious, King Nebuchadnezzar ordered Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego to be brought in. When the men were brought in, Nebuchadnezzar asked, is it true that you don't respect my gods? and refuse to worship the gold statue that I have set up? If you don't worship it, you will be pitched into a roaring furnace. No questions asked. Who is the God who can rescue you from my power? Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego answered King Nebuchadnezzar, your threat means nothing to us. If you throw us in the fire, the God we serve can rescue us from your roaring furnace and anything else you might cook up, O king. But even if he doesn't, it wouldn't make a bit of difference, O king. We still wouldn't serve your gods or worship the gold statue you set up. Nebuchadnezzar, his face purple with anger, ordered the furnace fired up seven times hotter than usual. He ordered some strong men from the army to tie them up, hands and feet, and throw them into the roaring furnace. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, bound hand and foot, fully dressed from head to toe, were pitched into the roaring fire. Because the furnace was so hot, flames from the furnace killed the men who carried them. While the fire raged around Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, Suddenly, King Nebuchadnezzar jumped up in alarm and said, didn't we throw three men bound hand and feet into the fire? That's right, O king, they said. But look, he said, I see four men walking around freely in the fire, completely unharmed. And the fourth man looks like a son of the gods. Nebuchadnezzar went to the door of the roaring furnace and called in, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, servants of the high God, come out here. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego walked out of the fire. All of the important people gathered around to examine them and discovered that the fire hadn't so much as touched the three men. Not a hair singed, not a scorch mark on their clothes, not even the smell of fire on them. Nebuchadnezzar said, Blessed be the God of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. He sent his angel and rescued his servants who trusted in him. They ignored the king's orders and laid their bodies on the line rather than serve or worship any god but their own. So ends the reading for this morning. At this point, we'll ask the children to come forward to spend a little time with the puppets. I mean, wow. <laughs> uh, it's the Crow Sisters. Hi, girls. Hi, Pastor Park. Hi, kids. Boy, Pastor Park, you are singing much better. Oh, well, yeah, I'm, I'm trying. <laughs> thank you, girls, and thank you for working with me to help me sing better. <laughs> it's our pleasure always there to help out whenever needed. So to what do we owe this pleasure this morning? It's Rally Sunday, Pastor Mark. All the excitement of starting another year of Sunday school, church, adult classes, we couldn't miss that. Oh, we're glad to have you with us, girls. 
Yeah, I sure will miss this when I'm gone. What? Yeah, we sure going to miss doing this with you also. But, you know, all good things have to come to an end, or don't have to, but they must. And now that you are flying the nest and moving up north, you will have a whole new experience and lots of good things happen to you, Dolly. I guess, but I am kind of afraid I won't have my crow sisters with me for the first time in my life. I know, but we will be there with you in your heart, Dolly. Just like you will be here with us in ours. What are you afraid of, Dolly? They got monsters up there? Oh, well, no. I, I, I just won't know where anything is. Like, you know, the fellowship hall, the bathrooms, the drinking fountains, you know, stuff like that. Gustav will be there with me, but he won't know where anything is either. Oh. And we won't know anyone, but, well, we do have each other. Oh, that could be scary, but maybe they will have a hospitality committee like we have here. They will help you, I am sure. I'm sure they will have an adult class and picnics and coffee hour where you can meet lots of people. Right, kids? Okay. Well, sure. remember, when we first came here, we didn't know anyone. And now look. Most everybody knows the Crow Sisters. Oh, yeah. Oh. Hopefully that people know us is a good thing, Polly. <clears throat> well, gee, <clears throat> um, I, I guess I, I just don't <clears throat> know. Uh, girls, I'm here. It took a while to get up this ladder, but I'm here. <laughs> hey, hey, it's Gustav. Good, good to see you. Well, it's good to see all of you girls also. I had just to come and share did with time with you girls. I will miss you, Polly and Molly. And we will miss you too, Gustav. Gustav, you've taught us so much and put up with all our shenanigans. Yeah, yeah uh, sorry about that, Gustav, but it sure was fun. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, you girls are a handful. But I also will say I had fun. You girls aren't so bad, you know, but I am looking forward to sitting out on my pier with my feet up, a fishing pole, relaxing, and not having to worry about you girls. <laughs> That's a, a well-deserved retirement, Gustav. You, you're gonna, you handled it well. <laughs> you two have so much new and exciting stuff coming up, just like we do here at church. Our Sunday school starts today. Yes. Soar in a week or yes. two. Lots of old and new small group adult classes. I don't know what they will do at your new church, but you will have to new, you will have new people to meet, new classes to go to, a whole new life starting. You know, hopefully Polly and I have new and exciting things happening to us too. Mm -hmm. Wonder what they will be. Hey, it definitely won't be the same here without you, but knowing you two, um, you have so much to share. You will be involved soon after you enter the church doors, I bet. Yeah, you know, now that you are um, bringing all this up, we do have a new life starting, don't we, Gustav? Who knows? Maybe they will need a puppet ministry group. Hmm. Um, we don't need to be afraid because God is with us. Didn't we learn that in vacation Bible school? Mm -hmm. Yeah, Dolly. We will have to listen to God and see what he wants us to do at the new church. I think you taught us, Gustav, that with God, all things are possible. And you two could do some seriously wonderful things up north. For sure, and we're excited for you, and we're excited for us and the church and all the new and exciting things starting up again. Right, Pastor Park? That's right, Polly. So with all the new changes coming up, uh, can we bow our heads in prayer? Right, Lord, uh, um, 
I know that uh, Dolly and Gustav are worried a little bit about uh, going to their new church, just like uh, some of us were worried going back to school or worried as we start Sunday school this year. But uh, Lord, you've got lots of good things in store for us. Help us to be excited about that. Help us to be courageous. Uh, Lord, go with uh, Dolly and Gustav. Uh, that they can thrive in their new church. And Lord, be with us here that we can uh, meet new people and learn new things and have a wonderful year. We ask these things in your name. Amen. Amen. Do I get to sing with you guys? Of course. <laughs> okay. I'm going to miss those ladies, but uh, hopefully you guys can help me with the singing sometimes, too. Yeah. <laughs> oh, okay. Well, tell you what, if you guys want to, uh, want to head back to your seats or if uh, you're in preschool, you can head back to the nursery. Thank you. So um, uh, we don't have God moment listed in the bulletin, but we do have a few people we need to uh, honor this morning. And I want to start uh, with some men's club folks. Uh, as you may know, uh, our uh, men's club uh, leaders who've served us for several years retired this year. Yesterday they had their first meeting and elected some new folks, but uh, I want to say thanks to the old folks. Is, uh, is Pete Putnam here this morning? I. I saw him at the cancer walk yesterday, and he was telling me something about beer, so I don't know. <laughs> um, how about Russ Stevens? Boy, they... There, hey, Russ, come on up. And uh, Bob, you want to pop on down here right quick? So these uh, are certificates of appreciation that we are awarding uh, to these fine folks for service to Onalaska United Methodist Church as, in whatever roles they have served as officers or uh, founders. Uh, the men's group would not have made it without you. Thank you and God bless. And we're giving you an, an honorary uh, title, RGG, really good guy. <laughs> so thank you very much. And then, uh, Peggy, where are you at? Come on up here. Believe it or not, 20 years have passed plus, and we've had puppet ministry here. And since the Crow Sisters are like flying the coop, and it's, <laughs> what can I say? Um, I just wanted you to know that there are more than I know I'm the center person that most people know is in puppets, but there were three other people who were very, very um, strong supporters and right there with me, and I couldn't have done it without them. And they are, of course, my crow sisters, Katie Fleece and Sue Sanders and Earl. Stand up, please. And without them, we couldn't have done what we did. And I appreciate them so much. So, and Sue and Earl, best of luck to you. All right, it is the changing of an era, but uh, you guys have given us such a strong base, we will carry on. Uh, and Sue, Earl, visit whenever you get a chance. All right. We're going to continue our service now with our prayer of confession this morning. Uh, this is a prayer from uh, Christians in India for a refuge amid distraction. Like an ant... On a stick, both ends of which are burning, I go to and fro, 
without knowing what to do and in great despair. Like the inescapable shadow that follows me, the dead weight of sin haunts me. Graciously look upon me and hear my confession. Your love is my refuge. Lord, sometimes it seems like uh, life is one big exercise in putting out fires, and we stumble from one trouble to the next, usually of our own making. Lord, help us as we seek to do better, as we seek to uh, live in a more loving way, as we seek to make wise choices and keep us from sin. We ask these things in your name. Amen. All right, let's uh, join in our response song, number 349. Well, we have started a sermon series for September uh, called The Rest of the Story. Apologies to Paul Harvey for swiping that from him. Uh, But we are going to dig deeper into some of our familiar scriptures and learn more about the background and then maybe be surprised by some new insights as we see how they connect with our lives. And when we first proposed this series, we asked people on our Facebook page and I asked people around the church to suggest uh, Bible stories that they want to dig into. And Peggy Benz said, I want to know more about those guys in the fiery furnace. What were their names again? (laughs) Well, I'm glad you asked, Peggy. Their names were Shadrach, Meshach, and Asbestos. I mean, Abednego. (laughs) Well, this this story is actually really close to my heart because when I was a kid, my church did a youth musical version of this, and I can can still remember the title song. It's cool in the furnace, man. Man, this furnace is cool. That was pretty good when I was in junior high. (laughs) I mean, it was, it was, we did a great job. It was such a hit, we went on tour with it. Yep, we left little old Trinity Presbyterian Church in the town of West Lebanon, Indiana, population 800, and we went for the bright lights of the big city. We were invited to the Warren County Fair in Williamsport, Indiana, population 2000. We played the fairgrounds Coliseum. Uh, I think we've got a picture here. Yep, there it is, dirt floor, wood pews, and they did a pretty good job cleaning up the cow patties before the show. So, But for our group of kids, that was our first experience of performing in front of a, a foreign crowd. And when I think about it now, it was kind of an amazing thing for a group of uh, upper elementary and middle school kids to sing and to talk about their faith in front of strangers. Well, back to our story. So it takes place in Babylon under King Nebuchadnezzar. Uh, Remember, the Babylonian Empire under the King Nebuchadnezzar had utterly destroyed Jerusalem in 597 B.C. They even tore down the sacred temple where uh, God's presence was promised to be with the Jews at all times. And the Babylonians, they weren't just about winning wars. They were about wiping out whole cultures. And so they took tens of thousands of young Jewish men and women, the rising stars, the best and the brightest, into captivity. They marched them 500 miles across the burning deserts to Babylon near modern Baghdad. And uh, Babylon was one of the biggest cities in the world at the time. As you can see, it had uh, fantastic buildings, um, high rises, uh, lots of color. This would be a lot like taking everybody between the ages of 15 and 25 here in the greater La Crosse area and marching them down to Chicago. Now, they wouldn't be happy to leave, but once they got down there when dazzled by the bright lights in the big city, they might not want to come back either. And we'd be devastated by the loss of our youth. The Babylonians stripped everything away from uh, their captives, everything that identified them as Jews. They even took away their names. 
Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego are actually Babylonian names forced upon three young Jewish men known as, or whose mothers named them Hananiah, Mishael, and Azariah. Now these young men were taught Babylonian ways and customs. They were given a good Babylonian education. They were placed in positions of minor leadership within the government. They were, uh, Babylonians were really trying to impress them with their superior culture and assimilate them into Babylonian society. And King Nebuchadnezzar even orders that these young Jewish men are to be fed with the richest and finest foods from the king's own table. Now the thing here is that uh, what the king of Babylon eats is not uh, fit for the Jewish standards of kosher cooking and clean foods. And Daniel and his three friends, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, uh, pledge that they will only eat vegetables uh, so that they can honor their Jewish religious and dietary customs. And Nebuchadnezzar is impressed that they not only survive, but they thrive on such a diet, and so he gives them even more responsibility. Now this is where the trouble starts in today's scripture. There's a, a lot of hyperbole in this account uh, and it kind of befits the most powerful king in the biggest empire in the world at the time. And bad advisors are playing to the king's giant ego here. Apparently, King Nebuchadnezzar is convinced that he is a god because he is really powerful. And so he creates this giant golden statue of himself and he issues a law. Now it's a stupid law, but it's a law. He says, whenever a giant band, the world's biggest band, plays, then everybody is supposed to stop what they're doing and bow down and worship this statue. And the penalty for failure to do so is death. Yikes. Well, of course, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego refuse. They are good Jewish boys. They know the first commandment well. I am the Lord your God. You shall have no other gods before me. And they tell the king that they will not comply because there is only one God and it ain't Nebuchadnezzar. Moreover, they trust their God. And whether they live or die, they say, is irrelevant. Well, you can imagine, Nebuchadnezzar doesn't like this. He's a bit of a hothead. He flies into a rage and he orders a giant furnace fired to extreme temperatures. We're talking about metal smelting temperatures. He has Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego bound and thrown in and the flames are so fierce that the soldiers who toss the men in are killed by the fire roaring out of the furnace. What happens next is strange indeed. Through the blinding glare and through the flickering haze of the heat, figures are seen walking around inside the furnace as if it was their backyard. There's one, two, three, four. Four people in the furnace. And the fourth one, Nebuchadnezzar says, looks like a son of the gods. Now it's never explained in the book of Daniel just who this fourth person is. Only Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego walk out of the flames. And they are unharmed and they're praising God. And they don't even have a whiff of smoke or a smudge of ash on them. So who is that fourth person? Well, it's long been a part of Christian tradition to see this son of the gods as the son of God. Jesus himself making a guest star appearance in the Old Testament almost 600 years before his birth at Bethlehem. Jesus, who saves us from the flames of hell, literally appears in the fiery furnace protecting these young disciples. That's the surprise lesson here. Jesus walks with us in times of trial. But what's, what's the rest of the story? What is the lesson for us in our lives today? Well, I think we can look at the powerful faith of these three friends in the midst of a culture of temptation surrounded by the most powerful uh, empire on earth at that time, glamour, wealth, power, privilege. All Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego have to do is go with the flow. We're surrounded by the same temptations. We live in the most powerful country on the face of the earth, and we are tempted every day by wealth and power. We're tempted to take shortcuts at work or school. We're tempted to watch salacious TV and movies, to compromise our values, to avoid the mockery of society, to go with the flow. What is our response to those temptations and challenges? 
Well, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego said, we're not compromising. Live or die, we trust in God. When we make the same choice to stand on our Christian principles, it is a powerful witness to the culture around us. When we persevere peacefully through trials with the help of Jesus Christ, people notice. They say, those Christians, they're different. I mean, they have the same problems I do, but how can they be peaceful in the middle of that? How can they even maybe be joyful when life sucks? I want what they've got. We are living witnesses. It's, it was true when Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego went into the fiery furnace. It was true when my 13-year-old self stood up on the county fair stage singing about the fiery furnace. And it's true today when you honor your faith and stand by your Savior in the face of temptation and trial. For when you stand by Jesus, Jesus will stand by you. And man, that witness is cool. Amen. Amen. <clears throat> so what prayers do we have today? What would we like to share with the Lord? What joys do we have? What burdens do we carry? Lord God, it is such a blessing uh, to be your people. It is such a blessing to gather in your house. It is such a blessing uh, to hear your word read. And it is such a blessing to gather with our friends and dig in and learn more and to go deeper. As we begin our year of Sunday school um, and adult classes and small groups, Lord, I pray that you would help each of us find a spot, find some people to, to be with so that we can explore uh, what you have to share with us. Lord, we are uh, uh, especially grateful for all of the volunteers who uh, serve in our church um, and those who teach Sunday school programs. Um, we ask that uh, you be with each of them, lend them the wisdom and strength to nurture our young people through the year. Lord, we want to lift up uh, the folks we know who are sick or suffering. Uh, we pray for health and wellness. We pray for an end to pain. We pray for peace in the midst of trials. Lord, we give you thanks for those who are healing. Um, and especially yesterday at the cancer walk, it was good to see the witness of so many survivors uh, who've uh, been through cancer and have survived uh, a year, uh, 10 years, uh, 20 years. There was even somebody there who survived 40 years after breast cancer. Uh, what an amazing testimony. 
Um, that gives those of us going through the trials great hope. Lord, we thank you for all the folks that uh, stand close by uh, to walk with us during our times of trial and trouble, uh, who uh, sit by our bedside or who visit us in our homes, who pray for us wherever they're at, who take the time to make an extra effort, give a little more so that we can beat some of these terrible diseases. Lord, we want to uh, uh, ask that you would be uh, with us as a nation as we respond to these natural disasters that have ravaged our country from uh, the Hurricane Harvey that hit Texas so hard and which has also uh, brought uh, rain and flooding uh, up the uh, middle of the south uh, to the new hurricanes coming across the Caribbean and, and working their way up Florida and threatening more and more people uh, to the wildfires raging out west uh, and to all of the situations that, that are afflicting uh, people, putting lives and families in danger. Lord, we ask for your protection. We ask for uh, you to help us uh, to be wise in responding to these disasters. We ask that you would work through us to bring relief to those in need. We ask that you would unify us in our response, that we might show uh, true love, true Christian love for these people. Lord, uh, for uh, those going through change, uh, which is pretty much all of us, we ask that you walk with us, whether we're marking another milestone of a birthday or moving to a new area or going back to school. Um, uh, there's much in our lives that is new, uh, much that is exciting, but also a little scary. Help us to have the faith of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego that you will walk with us, that we need fear nothing, and that we can trust in you. We ask these things in your name, and we join in the prayer that you taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. The lines, the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. All right, we have a chance to share with the Lord our gifts and offerings. I'm going to ask the ushers to come around, or if you'd like to give electronically, you can do so online or using your phone. And um, on the online giving, we do have a special line for hurricane response. If you want to uh, make a donation on an envelope for hurricane response, make sure you note on there um, what amount you want to give for that so that we can uh, pass that along. <laughs> rise. O Lord, you are worthy to receive all glory, honor, and praise, for by your will all things are created and have their being. Bless now these gifts that we offer in thanksgiving for your great faithfulness. 
Amen. Well, thank you for worshiping with us today. I hope you've caught some of the sense of excitement that I know the, the kids and Sunday school teachers have. I hope that you'll uh, uh, maybe check out a class for yourself. And uh, we will have uh, a rally around the Peace Poll at, I think, about 920 or so. All the kids will be going out there. So if uh, you stick around uh, after coffee, come and join us out there. It's fun to see the energy in the kids. Uh, and I'm excited to see uh, what we as a church do in this year going forward. If you're visiting and you want to know more about uh, this congregation where uh, we lean on Jesus, we trust him to be with us, then you can ask the folks around you and they can tell you about the assurance that they have and the reassurance that they take in that good news. Uh, if you um, want to spend some time in prayer, if you would like to celebrate something or if you're burdened with uh, a load and you'd like to uh, talk about it, think about it, pray about it with me, Give me a call. I love to spend that time with you as well. We're going to close today with a final hymn. We have a blessing. We will go for it. Those aren't quite the words I remember, but that was fun. <laughs> do, Lord, remember us as we go out into the world. And folks, do remember the Lord. He is faithful. You can count on him. Amen. Amen.